Okay, let's walk through creating one of these frequency distributions one more time. I have a data set that has 36 observations in it, and they're actually the holding time recorded to the nearest whole year between the purchase and sale of an individual's collection of stock in his portfolio. So what I did was I entered the 36 values into Excel. I sorted them from highest to lowest just so it would be easier for me to do this. You could certainly do them by hand um, or just do this you know anyway you don't have to use Excel. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine the number of classes using the 2 to the K rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here. I'm going to start multiplying 2 by itself to itself until I get to a number larger than 32. So I've got 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, which is great, but it has to be bigger than 32. So I'm going to go one more time. That's going to give me 64. Now that I've got a number larger than the total quantity of data I have, I just go back and count up my twos, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So what that means is I have six classes. Now I'm going to determine the num the width of class by taking the range of the data. So I'm going to take the largest data point, which in this case is 14. I'm going to subtract the lowest data point, which in this case is 3. I'm going to divide it by the number of classes, which I just said was 6. What I'm going to end up with is I'm going to end up with 14 minus 3 gives me 11. Divided by 6 comes up with 1.833. I'm going to round that to 2. So now I have 6 classes with a class width of 2 each. So I'm going to start creating my classes. And I'm going to start with the lowest data point. I'm going to say it goes from 3 plus the width to 5. Remember that class goes from 3 up to but not including 5. So from 5 up to and not including 7. 7, up to and not including 9, 9, up to but not including 11. So I've got four classes so far, so I'm going to do it go 5, so 11, plus the class width of 2 gives me 13. Start the next class with my upper limit, say 13, plus a width of 2 gives me 15, gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 classes. Whoops, I don't need this last one, I'll get rid of that one. All right. Now I've got to start putting my data into the classes to creating their frequency. I can simply add it up. Um, I, since my data is sorted, it's kind of easy. I know that for the class between 3 and up to 5, I'm just going to have two data points, 3 and 4. Um, between 5 and 7, remember I'm only going to have 5 up to but not including 7. So that's going to give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 data points. Now I have 7 to 9, which is 7, up to but not including 9. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 data points there. Now I have to go from 9 to 11. Between 9 and 11, I have 9 between, now I've got to figure out what I have that's between 11 and 13, and it turns out I have 0, and that's okay. Um, having an empty class is perfectly legitimate, because sometimes you just have a gap, but between 13 and 15, I have 3. Remember that the check that you want to do is all of the numbers here need to total up to the total number of data points that you had in your data set. So I have 2 plus 7 plus 11 plus 9 plus 3 gives me 32. 
it lets me know that I got them all. I didn't miss any. Now I'm going to calculate relative frequency. Remember that relative frequency is simply the relationship of the individual class or individual observations in a class relative to the whole. So for relative frequency, I'm going to simply divide 2 divided by 32. So I think I need to format these cells real quick, guys. Hang on with me. Hang with me for a second. There we go. All right. So I'm going to take 2 divided by 32. I'm going to take 7 divided by 32. Take 11 divided by 32. 9 divided by 32. That one's 0. And then 3 divided by 32. Now, the check here is just like your frequencies had to add up to 100% of your data points or the number of quantity of data you had, your relative frequencies should add up to 1 or 100% because these are percentages. So if I take all of those percentages and I add them together, um, I take 0.06 plus 0.22, 0.34, 0.28, 0.32, 0 0.09, and I come up with 0 0.99, which in statistics is close enough to 100. Um, probably a little bit of rounding in there, but if you come up with 99%, um, you're pretty much good to go. So now we have the frequency. We have the relative frequency. Now I'm going to add something new, and I'm going to tell you about cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency is simply kind of like a snowball rolling down the hill. Um, as we move down, we are going to collect the frequencies. So we start with the frequency in the smallest class. Now I want to know, for cumulatively, how many data points fall below 7. Well, that's everything in the first class plus everything in the second class. So I'm going to say 0.06 plus 0.22 means that 0.28, or 28% of my data, falls below the upper class limit of 7. Now I want to know, cumulatively, how much of my data falls below an upper class limit of 9. In order to do that, I just take and add 0.28 plus 0.34 gives me 0.62. The next cumulative frequency, I'm just going to add the frequency in the next class, which is going to be 90%. This class is empty, but I still put in that I'm still at 0.090. And now, finally, this will tell me what percentage of my data falls below the upper class limit of 15? Well, I know that it's got to be 100% or 1, because that represents 100% of my data, all 32 data points. So in order to make sure, or in order to know that you've done it correctly, the check here is, after you've added all of these numbers, this plus this one gives this, plus this gives you 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 this answer. If the number at the end of your cumulative frequency is not 100%, then you missed something someplace because your total frequency is always all of your data points. Relative frequency is always 1 or 100% of your data. Cumulative frequency, likewise, is always 100% of your data. So, hope this helped. If not, uh, let me know and we'll get you something else.